Welcome back to Old Mountain Field and the Muse Tavern What's on Tap pregame show. I'm Tim Scott and today I'm joined by Ocean State Waves manager Eric Sorella. So coach, how's it like to return to Old Mountain Field for a two-game homestand after a four-game road trip across three different states? Yeah, it's nice. You know, we uh, we got beat up a little bit on the road and we've been traveling and not getting much sleep and backs tightening up and stuff like that on the bus, so it's always good to be home. And today against the Keene Swamp Bats, you're going with Ryan Gray today, the South Bar threw six innings against Danbury. What are your thoughts on him going into this game? Oh, well, he actually made some adjustments with uh, Coach Kiyu, uh in between starts, so he threw a good bullpen and he, he trying to add a little more depth to uh, his breaking pitch. Uh, he, he got away with throwing a lot of fastballs against Danbury, which... You know he's not uh, he's not a flamethrower, but he's not soft by any means. He just he does a real good job of hiding the ball. So he's 85, 88. My my look 80, you know 86, 90 because it's uh, it's hidden well. And last night the Ocean State Waves won 11 to five against the Sanford Mainers. He had nine hits for the Waves, the highest offensive output of the summer so far. What were your thoughts on the Waves' offense as they won their third game of the summer? Well, obviously that was exciting. We're, we're um, I think we were hitting about 182 going into the game, and uh, we're we're a lot better than that. And guys, you know, guys are starting to not try and do so much, and I'm starting to get familiar with everybody, and you know, make some little tweaks. Um, Alex King, for instance, has, has hit the ball well the last three days, and we just worked on a couple things with his load and, and getting on time. And um, you know, Timmy Lynch obviously had a big bomb for us, but it, it was good to, especially coming back down two nothing and having just a, a putrid first inning defensively, uh, to you know, really kind of put the game out of reach in the third. And now the Waves come back for one game, then they go on the road two more, and then they come back on Saturday to face the Newport goals. What are going to be your goals to tell the team, especially down this tough stretch against contentious teams? Oh, I mean, we we obviously have to start playing a little bit better against the top teams in our division. Um, those are the guys we're going to see in the playoffs. And if we can, uh, as much as I love going to Cardians and playing, you know, I'd rather have them over here because I think they're they're a different team. Um, so, you know, bottom line is we gotta we gotta win against the the top teams in our division, and we're going to. You know, it was the same situation last year, uh, but we got hot at the right time, and um, you know, it's AJ's back, and, and guys are getting healthy, and uh, it's a good sign. You know, it, it was the best VP we took all day today, so I, I would be real shocked if. We didn't have at least some very good quality at bats and score some runs today because the guys are, are, are looking good. And you mentioned A.J. Ramirez coming back today. What do you think he can contribute to the lineup, especially as you saw him last year? A.J., just with how he took BP today, um, was, was real exciting. And A.J., what he brings to the lineup is he really hits lefties well. Uh, he did it for us last year, but at the same time, he's a kid you can you could probably put in five or six different spots defensively, and it just gives you a lineup some flexibility and, and gives you the ability to give some guys some days off. Thanks, Coach. And that's, we're going to have a lot more coming up next here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. Welcome back to Old Mountain Field and the Muse Tavern What's on Tap pregame show. I am Tim Scott, and today I am joined by the man behind the scoring, the Ocean State Waves official scorer, Nathan, not Nathaniel Mack, Evan Westman. Welcome to the pregame show, Evan. Thank you. So, Evan, you've been scoring the games now for a few years now. What have you seen from the Ocean State Waves with the scorebook in hand? Um, well, I, um, I think the one thing we, we, um, we really need to do that I've seen that, um, that sees the uh, pitch count on, on the point streak app that I have, and it, it has a pretty big effect on the game. So I think that's um, that's one of our biggest assets. Let's backtrack a little bit. How did you get involved with the Ocean State Waves? Well, um, when, when uh, the Waves were uh, had their headquarters at Bomb Squad, I, I uh, had a couple of lessons there, and um, it came up that I, I, I've been interested in stats for a few so that came up, and one of the people who shared an office cub cubicle with Matt Finlayson, the GM, um, mentioned that to him because he was looking at his, uh, last year. He didn't have um, anyone returning for the position of scoring, and um, this guy that worked at um, Bomb Squad, his name was uh, Mark, he told Matt that uh, he, he had someone to fill positions, and that's pretty much how I got it. Sounds like a 
big riveting tale there. So now I'm doing the book for now two seasons. What have been the biggest highlights, especially using the point streak software? Um, well, there's always some kind of interesting plays that come up. It takes a little bit of uh, work to get through it. Um, I think one of the one of the biggest things that I've learned through it is, is like um, how much of a group effort scoring is. Sometimes I don't have the best angle on on, on something. It's a collaborative effort, whether it's a hit or an error, pass ball, wild pitch. Um, that's something that, that really comes up a lot. And now going forward, what do you think your biggest expectation is going to be going into the rest of the summer with the Waves? Um, I think we've got a good lineup this year. We had a we had some great hitters last year, um, and uh, some of our returning guys are some of the best of that. As we just saw we had some some of our big offensive players drafted. Um, I think I, I think we've got some firepower in our bats, and I'm looking forward to scoring that. Thanks, Evan. We'll have a lot more coming up next here on the NECBL broadcast to Old Mountain Field and the Muse Tavern What's on Tap pregame show. I am Tim Scott and today I'm joined by Ocean State Waves second baseman Nick Dawson. So Nick, in your first season with the Ocean State Waves, how do you like the atmosphere here in Rhode Island? Oh, I love the atmosphere. The coaches are all great guys. The owner, Finney, he really cares about the players and the community. It's just a great place to be. And playing second base, one of the uh, toughest positions to play in baseball. You've made a lot of great defensive plays this summer. How does that work? Like, how do you make all those great defensive plays? Is it just instinct, or do you always plan it out? Uh, well, I think instinct comes with practice. Like, the more you practice it, the more comfortable you feel out there. And it's just about having fun. And just if you're having fun, you can make plays because you're a loser. And coming from southern Mississippi, what's the biggest difference between the spring season and the summer season? Uh, I'd say that summer is more relaxed because there's a lot of pressure on you during the uh, spring season to win. And here it's just have fun, and, and we win anyways, so it's a lot more fun. And what do you think your biggest goals are going forward this summer with the Waves? Uh, just keep trying to get better at, at all aspects of the game. Just work on hitting, be a complete player. Thanks, Nick. We'll have a lot more coming up next here on the NECBL broadcast. of New Hampshire and I broadcast a lot of sports there so I looked around the area and stuff and saw that Keene had a baseball team and you know decided it would be a good idea to jump on in this summer and so far that's, that's what I've done. So working with another broadcaster in Jahoon Han who's calling a game on ESPN radio today what are the biggest challenges with working with another broadcaster in terms of balancing everything out? You know it definitely is a challenge but at the same time I think it's really good for, for the way that you learn how to broadcast with other people like you know, tonight I'm going to be doing with you and, and learning how he works just learning how to work together is really important and I think we've done a good job so far this season. And so far the Keene Swamp adds off to a 1-6 in six start even though with just one win to their credit what do you think the biggest strength of this team is this season? You know coming into the season everyone thought the hitting was going to be the strength. There's a lot of big guys on this team with a lot of strength and, and you know it started to come out here in the last few games they were able to pick up a win and uh, we'll see if that carries over for the rest of the season. And what do you think your biggest expectation for the Swamp Bats going forward should be? You know, I think they just got to start to pick everything up, get everything pieced together, pitching and hitting at the same time. It seems to be one or the other right now in either game. So, you know, expectations going forward, put those together and try to rack up a couple wins in a row. Thanks, Parker. That's all the time we have for the Muse Tavern What's on Tap pregame show. You can catch me and Parker on the NECBL broadcast network for the call of tonight's game. First pitch slated for 6.05. We'll be on the air at 5.55. Let's catch you right here on the NECBL broadcast. Old Mountain Field and the Gansett Raps call it a wrap postgame show here on the NECBL Broadcast Network. I am Tim Scott, and today I'm joined with the Gansett Raps player of the game, Mike Corrin. Mike had a big grand slam today against the Keene Swamp Bats and a 7-0 victory over the Swamp Bats. So, Mike, what are your thoughts on that grand slam you hit over there to left field? Um, you know, I was just trying to stay short and not trying to do too much, and I uh, felt lucky to put a good swing on it, so... That was your first home run of the season. How is it like to get that first home run out of the way early on this summer? I felt good, but, you know, I'm not looking for home runs. You know, I'm just trying to hit the ball hard. So, but it felt good, though. On a good homestand with two straight wins, what are the feelings in the locker room after the victory today? Uh, you know, feelings. We're, we're upbeat. We're happy. You know, we got a win streak going. So, yeah, we're, you know, we're looking forward to Wednesday. 
So on Wednesday, the Waves take on the Sanford Mainers at Goodall Park. What are you looking forward to at the home of the All Star Game this summer? Um, like looking for, look forward to like. What do you mean? Like, like looking forward, like to overall highlights. What are you hoping to do, of course, in the game on Wednesday? Oh, uh, Wednesday. Uh, I'm just trying to win. You know, play good defense, good pitching, good hitting, and you know, looking to, to get another W. So. And this is Mike Horn, our player of the game. Congratulations, right, Mike. You. And we'll have a lot more coming up here on the Gantt Raps Call It A Rap post game show here on the NECBL Broadcast Network.